An asteroid the size of a skyscraper zoomed past Earth on Tuesday. And by the end of the week, we could see seven. According to scientists, the object came within 4.5 million miles of Earth at a speed of 40,000 miles per hour. Now, researchers track all asteroids that come close to the planet and are looking into ways to divert ones that could make contact in the future. Astrophysicist at the National Science Foundation, Dr. Joe Pesci, joins us to discuss. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Good now, tell us, tell us what those efforts to divert asteroids look like. I mean, that's something uh, that is obviously a Herculean task, even for scientists at this point, with all of the knowledge that we have under our belts. But what do those efforts actually look like, and how far along have they progressed? Well, so to, to your point, yes, it is a Herculean effort. Uh, but it's something that, that's, that's potentially possi possible. It's just that it's not possible right now. So... You know, there are, um, the options include a, a nuclear burst on the, on the, on the asteroid to, to break it apart, uh, some sort of gravitational tweaking of the orbit of the asteroid to move it, you know, out of the way slowly. Uh, and so basically, these are the, the two main areas uh, that are being explored to deal with a, a potential impact of a large asteroid on, onto the Earth. They're not ideal. Uh, they take a long time to plan and to conduct, and we're not quite there yet. But the, but the point is that because these uh, efforts take a long lead time, we want to characterize what the environment is for these near-Earth uh, objects or potentially hazardous objects, potentially hazardous asteroids, we want to know where they are, uh, study their orbits, and so that we have some sort of lead time. And we know that, okay, in you know, 25 years, this particular object is going to impact the Earth, and so that gives us as much lead time as possible. Uh, we don't always have that, and luckily to date, we've been, we've been lucky. Um, but as we move forward, you know, hopefully we can do something to, to present a, a, prevent a catastrophe. Are, are, are the paths of these asteroids it, it precisely predictable or are there variables that come into play? Or could you, so, you know, it, with perfect knowledge, could you say, all right, you know, eight years from now, this one is going to be precisely in this moment and, and this is where the Earth will be? Or do you have to know a few other things that you can't know until a certain point? Well, certainly after they've been detect, detected uh, and discovered and then tracked for a while, the orbits can be determined with quite a, a high precision. There are always gravitational influences as they orbit around the sun, uh, if they encounter other large asteroids, uh, if they encounter the Earth, you know, a, a near flyby of the Earth will tweak their, their orbits. Uh, so these things are always affecting the, the orbits of, of near Earth uh, uh, objects. But if we can track them, once we've tracked them, then we can continue to tweak those, uh, our, our characterization of those orbits. And so that's the whole point of getting these objects in a catalog so that we can watch them as they move through the solar system. And we can say with great accuracy that, you know, in uh, 12 and a half years, this object will pass within 50,000 miles of the Earth or whatever. And so, yes, that, that is knowable. Uh, the, the, the problem are all of the objects that we haven't detected, right? And so there's lots of them out there. Uh, so from your insider vantage point, when will we actually be capable of doing this? That's like the obvious question, but at what point, you know, do you have a rough timeline of when this technology will be available to us so that we know an asteroid, or if we don't know an asteroid is coming within close contact of the Earth, we'll be able to actually take preventative steps from uh, civilization encountering something very ugly? So, you know, I mean, if it's, if it's as simple as sending up a rocket with some sort of high explosive or something, you know, we can kind of do that. We know what the lead times are on that. You know, we have to pull the, 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 the rocket together and the payload and, and uh, travel out to the asteroid. So, you know, probably, uh, I don't know, this is just off the top of my head, but probably uh, four or five, two or three years to get the rocket ready to go and then 
you know, depending on where the asteroid is, uh, the travel time to that. It's not an easy thing to do, but that's probably a capability that's within uh, 10 years, uh, I, I would venture to say. The gravitational assist, which is slowly tweaking the, the orbit of, of the asteroid so that it you know, will eventually um, miss the Earth, that is probably going to take a little bit uh, longer time. A, a number of studies are underway, and uh, we need to do experiments and tests, and so that's probably 20 or 30 years away. So in, in an optimistic as, sense. As a perpetual pessimist, what, what I envision happening is uh, <laughs> folks going up there trying to prevent an asteroid from hitting the Earth and uh, instead accidentally deflecting one right to us. <laughs> and just the ultimate self-own extinction. Uh, <laughs> any chance that, of that? Well, that's, that's certainly a possibility, right? Oh. Especially if, <laughs> Great. If, the, if you have the kinetic impact to right and you break it up into, into lots of pieces, the intent is that the pieces are small enough that they burn up in the atmosphere. But if but you know if that doesn't work, then yes, there could be could be problems. And the gravitational uh, assist is probably uh, a little bit more precise. Ultimately, in this lead time that we have before the technology is there, you know, just being able to warn is really important. And you know, fingers crossed. Uh, we don't know of any asteroids that are going to be impacting the the Earth on in in the near term. Uh, but fingers crossed, you know, if we know that in 25 years this is going to happen, we can, we can warn and we can try to determine where it might impact on the Earth. Uh, and, and, you know, that's the best we can do at the moment. Who's your money on long term, us or the asteroids? <laughs> well, asteroids and, and this cosmic debris are constantly raining down on us, right? Uh, small, mostly small pieces burning up in the atmosphere. But there's lots of them. Um, you know, will will eventually be be impacted uh, if you look far enough into the future. It's just the way it is, and it's the way it's always been. Uh, but you know, I'm confident in, in technology, and and our surveys that are detecting these objects, the objects that are potentially hazardous for for us on Earth, um, we 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 are understanding them better from a compositional scientific perspective, and then also we're we're learning where they are in our catalogs and surveys that we're uh, developing. So I'm, I'm confident that the technology will be there and we'll be able to do something more than just, you know, warn that, that the sky is falling. Well, Dr. Pesci, thank you so much for your expertise and for your optimism this morning. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. And, and I wouldn't lose too much sleep over this. So it's something to, you know, to marvel at the universe, but, but not to be overly uh, anxious about. Good to know. And we'll be back with Rising after this. <laughs> 